So we've been looking at the uh, physics rules, the electricity rules, the basic start for circuits. Trevor, we're going to get pretty heavily mathematical. I'm going to try and do it as intuitively as possible. But I'm sorry, there's going to be some multiplying and dividing. <coughs> Deal with it. Okay? And I'm not going to try and make them work out evenly. Sometimes when you divide, Matt, it's just going to be decimals. Because to try it, for simple circuits, I can do them in my head and make them work out evenly. But simple circuits are kind of boring. As soon as I get to a more complicated one, you're going to be like, oh, the current is 8.63956. Yeah, that's just what happened. I'm not going to try and make them work out evenly. What have we said? We've been talking about voltage and current and resistance. My analogy has been as follows. I said voltage is sort of like how high a chairlift carries you up a ski lift. Higher voltage means you're higher up the mountain. It means you have to lose all that height to get down to the bottom of the mountain. You have to lose all that voltage when you go through the circuit. We've said that current is like the number of skiers on a hill. More skiers, more current. And Mason, resistance is sort of like how deep the snow is. If the powder is really thick, you can't go as fast. Or you know what? Really, another way to think about resistance, Mason, is uh, if we have a hallway, if you were trying to run down the hallway, if the hallway was empty, no problem. If the hallway was full of other students, that's high resistance. Or if the hallway was narrower, that's high resistance. That's what brought us to this uh, straw analogy. We said another way you can think of resistance is sort of the thickness of a straw. So we said this, in high resistance, electrons move more slowly, they give off more heat, so they lose more voltage. Your stove elements, the elements on your stove are typically very high resistance. In fact, coal, that's a controlled short circuit, to be quite honest, and that's why they get red hot. In a wire in your house, that would be bad. If you had the wires in the wall glowing red hot, we call that an electrical fire, that's bad. But on a stove, we control it. Low resistance electrons move quicker. They tend to give off less heat energy. So an object with low resistance might feel warm, but it won't feel hot. Okay. And they lose less voltage. So here it is. This is Ohm's law. This is the relationship between current, voltage, and resistance. Ohm's law says V equals I times R. Can you find it on your purple formula sheet, just so you know where it is? It is there, yes? Somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, OK, so that, this is called Ohm's Law, named after a scientist whose last name was? Oh, there you go. Where V, what do you think the V stands for? Voltage. Whoop, hang on, Mr. Duick. Need to change the font. OK, draw. Uh, color and thickness. I think we're back to here, I hope. There we go. V stands for? Voltage. What do you think the R stands for? That, those two letters make sense. The I stands for the third thing in here. Current. Why don't we use this? C is taken by something else. Sorry. I think the I comes from a Latin word for current, I think. But I'm, honestly, I'm not sure anymore. I don't remember. V equals I times R, V equals I times R. Do you have to memorize this? No, I put it on your purple sheet. And remember it, Matt, anytime I give you a colored sheet, that means you can bring it into a test. You might end up memorizing this one out of laziness because you get tired of looking it up, which Brady is the only reason you should memorize something, because you're lazy, not because you have to, I think. Um, consider 12 equals 6 times 2. Can you write two other true equations from this? If 12 equals 6 times 2, what does 6 equal using the other two numbers? And not, there's not a 3 here. Can you write 6 with a 12 and a 2? Divided, OK. What was it, Alex? And I'm going to, instead of writing divided by, I'm going to write it like a fraction, because that, by the way, I hate the divided by sign, because from a distance, it looks too much like a plus sign, right? Math nerds don't like that. Uh, can you write an equation that works out to 2 using a, these numbers? If 12 equals 6 times 2, what does 2 equal? What divided by 6? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you ready? Now we're going to go algebraic. And I know now in math you guys are doing a fair bit of algebra. Josh, can you read this to me right there? 
Can you read this to me? I, I. V equals loud and proud. Read it to me, loud and proud. Okay, read this one over here. I'm making a point not to make fun of you, so read this one now. Read this one. I'm going to argue, Josh, those equations are identical with different stuff, but I'm going to argue in terms of the way they're set up and they look, they're identical. Which I'm, means, Josh, if I was able to get two other equations from this, I should be able to get two other equations from this. You follow the argument? So, let's see. If V equals I times R, what does I equal? Your hint is you can write it as a division question. Alex. Nice. Oh, what does R equal? Is that okay, Brooke? Did the same thing with the letters as we really did with the numbers. In fact, I think I gave you all three of those on your formula sheet somewhere, didn't I? In a box, I hope, I think. Yeah, 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 okay. So V equals I times R. Uh, Trevor, that's the standard way Ohm's law is phrased, but you could also say I equals V over R. It's the same math. Or R equals V over I. Same math. Stop. Write all three equations on the front page of your notes at the top of the page. So on the front page of this set of notes, how about we write V equals I times R, I equals V over R, and R equals V over I. Mr. Duick, we put them on our purple formula sheet. Yeah, but I've learned if I get you to write them out once, you help kind of figure out how they go better. So what does V equals I times R mean? Well, V equals voltage, I equals current, R equals resistance. Here's what it means, Kevin. If I know any two, we can calculate the third one. You tell me voltage and resistance, I can tell you how many amps of current that circuit has. You tell me the resistance and the current, I can tell you how many volts you're going to need of a battery to hook it to make it work. You tell me how many volts of a battery I got and how many amps are running through there, I can tell you what kind of resistor you need to put into that circuit to guarantee that that's the voltage and the amperage. This is the start of being able to design and customize circuits. It gets way more complicated, but this is the start. So we have three formulas. V equals I times R. I equals V divided by R, although I prefer to go I equals V over R. And R equals V. Oh, you know what? Ha. I wrote it like that with fractions. I knew I would have done that. I was going, why wouldn't I have made it fractions? It's easier, because then you can see something on the top and on the bottom. When you write in all caps on the internet, what does that mean? It's really worth memorizing which units go with which quantities. Trust me. So voltage is measured in, that's the easy one. Current is measured in, Current is measured in mm. amps. And resistance is measured in, it's been a whole week, ohms, OHMS. The symbol for the shorthand, like meters, we symbolize with an M. Kilograms, we symbolize with a KG. Uh, volts is a capital V. Current is a capital A. Why wouldn't we use an O for ohms? Because what does that also look like? A zero. This was that funky, uh, I always pretend it looks like a mouse hole in a wall. Right? There's the wall, and there's the mouse hole in the wall. It's a Greek letter omega. It's, it's a Greek letter O.
join the resistance. Om. 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 Okay, tough audience. Ready? Practice problems. Uh, I do something for physics that I call, you don't need to write this down if you don't want to, DFIC, where the D stands for Martin Lister data, the F stands for find a formula, the I stands for insert the numbers, and the C stands for crunch or calculate the answer. So my physics 12 students, they know when in doubt, you DFIC, you list everything, and then the other acronym that I use in physics is UDALP, which stands for draw a little picture. When in doubt, DFIC and DALP. We're not going to be drawing pictures, but we're going to DFIC. Let me show you what I mean. It says this. The current through a light bulb is 2 amps. The voltage is 9 volts. What's the resistance? Step one is list your data. I always start out, Franz, by asking, what are they asking me to find? What are they asking me to find in this question, Franz? What is the? And here's what I do, because I like to have maximum bang for minimum buck. Brooke, I want to be as organized as possible and write as little as possible. And it is possible to do that. I always start out by going, I write down what they want me to find, and I put a question mark next to it. I've learned over the years, Evan, even for the most complicated problems, even for a problem that I have no idea how to start, I can almost always tend to say, figure out what they're asking me to find. And by writing that down, because now my question is no longer blank, I feel better, I'm more relaxed. Don't ask me why, but I've learned that with working with teenagers. Then I go back and I look for numbers and units and in physics, physics words. I see a two. See it? What are the units next to that 2? Amps. What is that 2? Voltage, resistance, or current? How do I know? Because Mr. Duick said, Mason, it's worth memorizing what units go with what. It really cuts down on your thinking. So my physics 12s would say, oh, hey, amps. Let's write down I equals 2. If you want to, you can put the amps next to it. You don't have to, but you can. I keep reading, I keep reading, I see a 9. Mason, what are the units next to that 9? What's that stand for? See, yes? So, sorry, say that again, you're right. So if you had to guess, what is this 9? Current, voltage, or resistance? What did you tell me the units were? So if you had to guess, is this 9 current, voltage, or resistance? So what letter do I use for voltage in my equation? See, I put that together? So I'm looking for an equation that has an I, an R, and a V in it. Well, I got three of them. Uh, which one has the R by itself? Can you read it to me, Cole? Just letters. I went to go see a pirate movie the other day, but I couldn't get in because it was rated R. R. R e okay. Mason, what did you tell me the voltage was? Nine. And what's the current? Seven. Yeah, you do. Two. That, this is why I listed. There's no, you'll never say, if you've listed your data, you can't say, I don't know. This is my approach. We list our data, and then it's plug and chug is the phrase I use in physics. We're just going to plug in numbers. Hey, what is 9 divided by 2? Okay. This is going to be 4.5 what? What do I measure resistance in? What are the units? Ohms. So the habit you also want to get into, Evan, once you get your answer, pause, units. I will be fussy on that, because otherwise, I don't know what you're telling me. This is going to be my approach. DFIC, list my data, find a formula, insert the numbers, crunch the answer. Except we're going to do some actual more interesting word problems. Hey, what's the resistance of a light bulb with a voltage drop of 120 volts and a current of 15 amps? OK. Brady, what's this question asking me to find? Yep. Now, the nice thing in physics, unlike math word problems, is it's almost always pretty obvious what they're asking you to find. Hey, what letter have I been using for resistance? No? Oh, no. What letter have I been using for resistance? 
R, so I'm going to write down R equals question mark. That's my way of saying that's what I'm being asked to find. Brady, I see 120. What is that 120? Oh, so you're telling me V equals 120? What's that 15? Which is what letter here? What letter have I been using for amps? I? Brady, I'm looking for an equation that has a V and I and R in it. It'd be nice if the R was by itself. Is there one? Yeah. Which one? Um, like Just tell me the letters. R. R. Yeah. Give me the whole equation. R. It's on your purple sheet. The equation has got the R by itself. V over I, yeah. Now we plug and chug. How do I know which one goes in for the V? By taking that one second to list it, Mason, it becomes pretty obvious. By the way, what I'm really sneaking in here, you guys, I think, call it substitution in Math 9, right? But now we're doing it for a reason. It's not an X and a Y that means nothing. We're saying, actually, no. It turns out math in the universe actually helps you calculate stuff. What's the voltage here, uh, Brady? Yep. Divided by, what's the current? OK. In your calculator, 120 divided by 50. You know what? I think I can do that in my head, because it's going to be 120 divided by 3. Uh, if I divide by 3, it's 40 over 5. Uh, 8? Double check me. Yeah. Yes? 8 what? Is that OK, Sierra? Let's try the next one. Sierra, what's this next one asking me to find? Current. Yeah. I, I, by the way, I'm not going to try and hide what I'm trying to find. It, you'll either see what is the, or find the, or how much current, or it, it'll be pretty obvious, Nick. It's, it's, ne it's not a mystery here. Uh, Sierra, which variable have I have been using for current in my Ohm's law equation? I. So I'm going to go like this. I've written down what they're asking me to find. I feel better. Now I go look for numbers. Sierra, what's that 18? How do I know? Okay, But what is that 18 in my equation? Which is which letter? Now, there's two ways I know. It actually says a resistor of 18 ohm. But can you see, even if I hadn't used the word resistor, Mason, this is why I said it's worth memorizing what units go with what. You see the number. First, it's easy to spot the number. Yes? And you see the symbol. Oh, that's R. What's that 6, Sierra? I'm looking for an equation that has a V and I and an R. Well, it's Ohm's law. But can you give me the one that has the I by itself, please? That's what I'm looking for. Oh, what's V? 6. What's R? 18. You get 0.33333333333333. You know what? I'm going to go like this. 0.33. I'll go to two decimal places. You know, okay, three decimal places. I mean, how much more accurate do you want to be? Uh, units. What did we find, and what units will I stick on here? We found the current. Sierra, what were the units for current? Yep. OK. Again, Kevin, if I give you any two, you can find the third. If I give you any two, you can find the third. Converting units. Ohm's law works with the units amps, volts, and ohms. However, we have these metric prefixes like kilo and centi and milli. So tensei, I'm going to tell you the more common ones. Sometimes if the readings are large, kilo is used in front of a unit. Kilo ohms would be written as K with a little ohms symbol. Or kilovolts would be written as K with a V. Or kilo amp well, kiloamps, 1,000 amps is pretty huge. You probably won't see that in real life. So a kilo is 1,000 of the original unit. One kilo ohm is the same as 1,000 ohms. So if I give you something with kilo, and I want to convert it to standard units, what do I do? I multiply 
by a thousand. I multiply by a thousand. So if you get kilovolts, times it by a thousand. If you get kilo ohms, times it by a thousand. If you get kilo amps, unlikely, but times it by a thousand. Uh, the one you will look at later, kilowatts, you know, times it by a thousand to get it back to watts. So what would three kilo ohms be? I would times that by a thousand, and I would say, really, that's the same as 3,000 ohm. Did I include on your formula sheet that kilo is times by a thousand? I did? So know where that is, if you forget. If the readings are small, milli, M-I-L-L-I, -L -L -I, is used in front of a unit. For example, milliamps, and the symbol for milli, Josh, is a lowercase m. Caught you zoning out. You're back with me now. A milli is one thousandth of the original unit. There are one thousand milliseconds in one second. So one milliamp is 0 0.001 amps. To convert milli to a standard unit, divide by 1,000. 400 milliamps, you would go 400 divided by 1,000, and you would get 0.4 amps. Did I include that on your purple sheet somewhere? Really? Wow. I'm nice. Too nice. If readings are really large, sometimes kilo is not big enough. Sometimes the prefix, hey, you guys are computer people. What does a capital M stand for in computer language, language and memory size? Mega. Yeah, you mean you actually read ahead and looked at it? Clever boy. Mega represents one million. So if you see eight megavolts, times it by one million, that's eight million volts. So Jolene, you are going to have sometimes your units with prefixes in front of them, and you'll have to do some adjustments. But they're nice adjustments. It's either times by a thousand, divide by a thousand, times by a million. You can do that on your calculator pretty easy. So let's summarize. When you see kilo, multiply a thousand, or for those of you who like exponents and less typing, 10 to the third, you all have an exponent button on your calculator, if you have a scientific calculator here. When you see milli, divide, oh, I hate that division symbol. I'm going to write it out. Divide by 1,000. When you see mega, multiply by 1 million, or I think 10 to the 6th is a million because it's got six zeros. I use the second one because I'm lazy and it's less typing. And yeah, I actually count the number of keystrokes when I'm on my calculator. I am that lazy. So let's try a sample problem. In a circuit, we know that the resistance is 400 uh, that, and the current is 3 uh, that. OK. Hannah, what's this question you want me to find? Um, I don't know. Read the question. It says, in a circuit, we what? Sorry, what? How'd you figure that out? What's the phrase? Read it out to me. How much? In, in, in other words, yeah, right. See it right there. Because I don't, I, I don't know all your different levels of reading skills, but you're gonna have to do some reading. Josh, sit up. You're gonna get good. By the way, the other way you could do it is you could have said, "Look up, look up." Hey, I think this is resistance. This is amps. What's left? What's missing? That's the other way. Oh, uh, V. Okay. That won't always work. Josh, sit up as we get more and more complicated. I'm really saying sit up, sit up, stay up. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do, Hannah, is this. 
You know why, Mason? Because it's no longer blank. I feel better. Who knew? But it works. Trust me. Okay. All right. What's R in this question? 400 what? Okay, so I'm going to write this. And then I'm going to say, how do I take care of Millie? What does that want me to do? Yeah? How, tell me what you're doing. So I'm going to get my calculator out. Or me, maybe you can do this in your head if you're good with decimals. I can. But just to walk you through it, if you aren't good with decimals, you would go 400. What does Millie say to do? Divide by 1,000? I won't make you show me this step. If you do it on your calculator, you can write it down if you want to, Mason. But what I do is this then, equals 0.4 amps, because my equation only works for amps. It doesn't work for milliamps or, sorry, amps, Mr. Duick? Good gosh. Ohms, Mr. Duick. My equation only works for ohms. It doesn't work for milliohms. I keep reading, I keep reading. Matt, what's the next number we see? What is that three? What? Ah, okay, so I'm going to say, first of all, is it resistance, current, or voltage? What letter have I been using for current in the Ohm's Law equation? No, A is the units. What letter? Okay. I equals, I'm going to write three kilo amps, and then what did you say, Matt, this actually is? How do you know? Times by 1,000. Probably most of you will be able to do the times by 1,000 in your head or feel comfy with it. Knock yourself out. Go ahead. Coming back to you, Hannah, I'm looking for an equation that has a V and I and R, and I'd like the V to be by itself because that's what I'm trying to find. V equals I Ohm's law. Hannah, what's I in this question as a number? 3,000. 3, yeah, not the 3, the 3,000. What's R in this question? So if you go 3,000 times 0.4, I think 120? Or 1,000, sorry, 1,200? That's what I meant. 1,200? 1,200 volts? 1,200 volts. Is that all right? So a lot of your homework is going to be using this. Turn the page. OK. Let's talk about resistors. It says this. A resistor controls current and potential difference. Hey, what was another word for potential difference? Do you remember? OK. If you want to, I'm going to put a little arrow voltage within a circuit. By changing, by swapping out 10, say, different resistors, we can get different answers for the V equals I times R. And the resistors are the easiest one to change because they're physical objects. I can pop it out of a circuit, put something else in there. Symbol for resistance is that wavy lines, those wavy lines. And it turns out it has bands of color on it that indicate the resistance and the accuracy. And sometimes the resistor has a fourth band it represents the percentage of accuracy between the indicated value and the actual value, where gold is 5% accurate, silver is 10% accurate, and no color is only 20% accurate. Say, what? We need to practice this a little bit. Here's a resistor. OK? This is, unfortunately, I can't photocopy color for you guys, so you'll just have to look up. But if you're looking at the resistor, it's got the first digit is brown. What does brown from the chart on your purple sheet? Because I did put it on your purple sheet as well. Sorry? One. So this is a resistance of one. What's the second digit, which is orange? Three. Three. And then there's a multiplier. This is going to be times 10 to the power of what's red? What is 13 times 10 squared? Can you do that on your calculator? 
You can also go 13 times 10 times 10 because that's what squared means. Or you could go 10, what is 10 squared in your head? 100, 13 times 100. This resistor is 1300 ohms. How accurate is this resistor? So we would say plus or minus 5% of accuracy. That means if you find 5% of 1300, which you learned how to do in math eight, if you go 0 0.05 times 1300, I'm telling you that that resistor is somewhere between 1,365 to 1,235, plus or minus 65 ohms. That one would be more expensive. A gold percentage is more expensive than a silver percentage, is more expensive than no stripe at all, because no stripe at all, those are probably throwaway cheap resistors, but they still work. OK, but not great. Okay. So what's your homework? No. Gonna pause that there. We are gonna start building some circuits, but not next day, because I want to teach you guys a bit more. But for now, if you look in your textbook on page 293 and page 294, and then I have a little worksheet homework thing for you here too. Pause. So change of plan. Instead of doing these questions here, what you really want to do is complete the questions attached to your notes. You can do them on a separate piece of paper and just staple them to the back, or you can do the separate piece of paper and just hand them in. I think I do want you to do them on a separate piece of paper. You have your purple formula sheet, and you can also finish the worksheet section 8.3 homework as well. You got lots of time. Get it all done in class.